let's talk about Winter's formula. So you've probably seen that this formula before, but first I want to talk about when and why we use it. So Winter's formula is a formula to predict the appropriate respiratory compensation in a metabolic acidosis. Whenever you have a metabolic acidosis, you would expect your lungs to try to work overtime to compensate for that and create a respiratory alkalosis. And this is easily seen by the drop in the PCO2. What if at the same time, there is another primary respiratory alkalosis or respiratory acidosis, however, it's being masked by a PO2 which is already abnormal. In order to figure this out, you need to calculate the expected PCO2 for a pure metabolic acidosis, and any derangements from that will be a sign of another primary respiratory pathology. So let's look at the formula itself. On the left is the PCO2. Now this is the predicted PCO2 for a pure metabolic acidosis, and this is the output of our formula. The only input to the formula is going to be the bicarb here in the middle and that's the measured bicarb. At the tail end of our formula is a plus minus two, a weird symbol you probably forgot since algebra. And all this means is that the true measured PCO2 can fall within a range of plus or minus two of what is calculated, and that is still considered within the predicted PCO2. You'll see this concept better when we do our examples in the end. Once you get your predicted PCO2, you can then compare it to your measured true PCO2. And this gives you three possible scenarios. First, the measured PCO2 falls within the range of the predicted PCO2. And in this case, you have a pure metabolic acidosis. That is, the respiratory compensation is exactly what you would expect without any other primary respiratory pathology. The second condition is that your measured PCO2 is greater than your predicted PCO2. And this denotes a metabolic acidosis with another primary respiratory acidosis. The last scenario is that your measured PCO2 is less than the predicted PCO2. And here you have a metabolic acidosis with another primary respiratory alkalosis. The way I remember this is to treat the predicted PCO2 as simply a baseline PCO2. So in the case of a increased PCO2, this is consistent with a respiratory acidosis. Again, carbon dioxide becomes an acid when dissolved. So if you're holding on to too much PCO2, this will create an acidosis. The exact opposite is true for the latter. A low PCO2 is consistent with a respiratory alkalosis. Again, if you're getting rid of too much PCO2, which is acidic, you'll create an alkalotic environment. So let's work on some practice problems using Winter's formula. Let's say we have an established metabolic acidosis with a PCO2 of 24 and a bicarb of 10. Again, the only input into the formula is just the bicarb. So we plug in 1.5 times 10, our bicarb, plus 8, plus or minus 2. 1.5 times 10 is 15. 15 plus 8 is 23. So we have 23 with a range of plus or minus 2. This is the same as 21 to 25. Now let's compare our measured PCO2 with our predicted range. As you can see, 24 fits within our predicted range of 21 to 25. This fits with scenario number one, which is a pure metabolic acidosis with appropriate respiratory compensation and no primary respiratory pathology. Let's do another example. Again, we have an established metabolic acidosis this case, we have a PCO2 of 38 and a bicarb of 16. Again, we plug 16 in the formula, 1.5 times 16 plus 8 plus or minus 2. 1.5 times 16 is 24, 24 plus 8 is 32. So our range is 32 plus or minus 2, which is the same as 30 to 34. Now let's compare our measured PCO2 with our range. In this case, our measured is greater than our range. This fits with scenario number two, which is a metabolic acidosis, again, which we knew about, but on top of that, a primary respiratory acidosis. 
So again, the reason why we are using Winter's formula is that it's hard to just look at a pure PCO2 of 38 in a case of metabolic acidosis and off the bat say this is a respiratory problem. Instead, we needed to use Winter's formula to calculate the appropriate predicted respiratory compensation to analyze whether there was another primary respiratory pathology on top of that.